thought for today is every night at 10.30, I realize it's only 6 p.m. We live in times of darkness, not only spiritually, but physically at this part of the year, December in our Western hemisphere, we have the least amount of daylight. So the church gives us this feast day of St. Lucy, whose name means light. And we'll know that starting very shortly, the days will start to get longer, beginning with the birth of Christ, because Christ is the true light of the world but he has other mini lights, which we call the saints. So we look for a moment today at the life of St. Lucy, the great virgin and martyr mentioned in the Roman canon, one of the eight women mentioned in the first Eucharistic prayer, one of the early saints and heroines and virgin martyrs of the early church, born in Syracuse, Sicily in the year 283, was martyred under Diocletian's orders in the year 304. So certainly a young maiden, probably still a teenager, born into a wealthy, noble pagan family. We know that her mother was converted by visiting the tomb of St. Agatha. And Agatha interceded, and Lucy and her mother were converted to the faith. And but Lucy had been entrothed to a pagan, and when she announced her conversion to Christianity and her dedication of her virginity to God. Her pagan fiance turned her over to the Rome, to the government of Syracuse. She was taken before the governor and refused to denounce her Christian faith, refused to offer incense to the pagan gods. And so the governor ordered her to be taken to a brothel, but the soldiers were unable to move her. God made her incredibly <clears throat> heavy and immovable, even with a team of oxen, they could not move her to, to the brothel. So eventually they tried to burn her to death. That did not work either. So the governor ordered her eyes to be gouged out by the sword. Her eyes were gouged out, but she continued to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Eventually she seems to be killed by the sword or beheaded. When her parents buried her, when her mother buried her, she her eyes had been restored. That's why St. Lucy is a patron saint of the blind and patron saint of those who have any ailments of the eyesight, macular degeneration and other illnesses of the eye. St. Lucy is very popular in certain parts of the world, especially Syracuse, New York, because of all the Italian immigrants from Sicily that settled in Syracuse. Also Omaha, Nebraska. They have festivals in Syracuse and Omaha every year on this Feast day of St. Lucy, very popular in Scandinavia. The oldest daughter dresses in white and wears the red sash around her waist. The white robe represents virginity, the red her martyrdom. And then she wears a wreath of candles on her head, like an advent wreath of candles. And again, representing St. Lucy, who is a bearer of the light of Christ. We know that her relics were taken by the Crusaders from uh, Constantinople, uh, from Sicily, first to Constantinople, and then to Venice. If you go to Venice today, she is buried in the Church of St. Lucy, right next to the train station. In 1981, her relics were stolen. Her body was stolen for five weeks, and the whole city of Venice was in an uproar, and they prayed novenas that God would restore their beloved Saint Lucy. And five weeks later, the police were able to discover her body, which was had been stolen by teenagers. Luckily, it was not malicious. It was more like a prank. And her body was restored. And so you can visit, again, the tomb of Saint Lucy in Venice. If you go there, of course, the, the gondoliers will sing Santa Lucia as they row you uh, through the canals of Venice. So we have a great devotion to St. Lucy. We pray to her today for all of our young people in this darkness of the world in which we live, not so much the physical darkness, but the spiritual darkness. We look to this great heroine to intercede, especially for all of our young people today. So we pray today, St. Lucy, virgin and martyr, pray for us.